bad about the fact that you are putting in new players you know, at the very start of the split. But hey, they've remained a playoff team so far. I think they are still likely to win this match. That's very true. So with that in mind, let's meet the teams. Starting on the blue side for today, it's going to be Delta Fox. These are some faces you guys might remember. In the top lane, it's Dyrus. In the jungle, it's Skara this time around. Mid lane of Boy Boy, bot lane, I'm a cutie pie, and his support, Shifter. And meanwhile, on the red side for game one, it is Big God's Jackals with Chris up in the top lane, Sir T in the jungle, Peek and Wolf in the mid, Fabi in the bot lane alongside Bayano, his support. And as you mentioned, as we're hopping into game one over here, it's going to be a very interesting kind of pick and ban phase to see. Yeah. A lot of comfort picks coming out from the side of Delta Fox, whereas Big God's yeah. Jackals may be playing something a little bit more standard. Likely to be more standard on the uh, on the Big God's Jackal side for sure. I did run into Mark uh, yesterday when we were planning out the, the match. Well, I know. Well, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I was thinking of ways to take that, and I decided to leave it there. I was hoping, I asked him, can you please have your team ban out Mark Z? in the pick ban phase. A little mm. bit of collusion, I'm sorry about that. Competitive integrity may be damaged, but uh, I think he declined to do that. I asked him as a favor, he he didn't. So unfortunately, with the Galio ban means there's no chance of that. Nah, unfortunately, Galio does really not start unlike. with M. No, or or backwards. I mean, or depending, backwards. if you're on the red team, you have to ban backwards because That's of the way true. it plays out. So you know, either way, not gonna work out for this one. Although the, the, uh, the Zac ban on the red side means they've got a chance. There's still hope that Big Gosh Jackals <laughs> can ban out Mark Z for you. I don't know if you talked to them or not, but as we oh, mentioned, Pick ban phase is going to be a little bit different for this team. Delta Fox has definitely been more about the comfort picks. We've seen things like the Cassidy being taken high priority, which is still something we've seen kind of in the LCS. But then we saw the Yasuo coming out from Boy Boy. We've seen Dyrus. And it wasn't too bad, actually. Like, oh, like the Boy Boy Yasuo was actually pretty good. And, and yeah, and look, to be honest, I like they bring out things that they know. I always mm -hmm. respect comfort picks. I always respect bringing in style choices for yourself. Again, this team is likely to go 0 and 20 in games or whatever at the end of the split is all said and done. But as long as you can look cool doing it, which playing Yasuo, shout out to the new skin, can help you do. Uh, you know, I'm okay with that personally. So excited to see what they are bringing, a, what they are bringing out. And, and again, the first 20 minutes tend to be pretty close with Delta Fox, and mm -hmm. and that to me is where a lot of the victories lie. Is you know, can can you look good? Can you style your opponents? Playing what you like to play and. You know, if Mark can whip them into shape somewhere down the end of the split, then good for them. Well, unfortunately, we won't be seeing the Yasuo this time around as it is banned away, as is the Zac. But as you mentioned, very strong lane phase from Delta Fox. And a lot of the questions we usually pose to up-and-coming challenger teams are the same things that Delta Fox is going through now. Once you get out of that lane phase, once you take like the outer ring of towers, right. how do you break the inner ring? Where is your next maneuver on the map? And that's something mm -hmm. that Big God's Jackals may be questioning themselves now that they kind of have extra voices. Before they had Bayano as their shot caller, now they have Chris and Sir T, who are both very strong presences on the voice comms as well as game. Sure, and that's fair. And honestly, you know, anytime you're one of these teams like Big God's Jackals, like, look, you are playing to make sure you keep in playoff running. They did beat CLG Academy to be fourth instead of fifth right now. If they win this, they're at two and two, which puts them a solid match ahead of CLGA. And as long as they beat them second time, they're almost guaranteed top four. And and that's really the goal, I think, right now, is, is shore up as much as you can, mm -hmm. be in as good form as you can possibly be, make sure you make the top four, and then hope you make that upset in the first round of the playoffs. You need to win one best of five, and you're in that promo tournament. And that's, I mean, that's the dream, right? That's the goal. Mm -hmm. So stay ahead, sharpen as much as you can. We'll absolutely be looking at Big Gods Jack to see how much they can improve and how good they can be by the end of the split. Right, now they got a roster that they're sticking with for right. supposedly the entire split. We'll see if they change anything up as they do, do still have some members on the bench but the grog is being first picked overall for delta pox not surprising sure. not only is it going to be a flex pick potential top lane but can wind up being something that you know it's a legacy scara pick exactly like he's got his own video of him playing the champion i mean go back and watch the i think it's the season three or four world championship there's like a hype trailer and mm -hmm. it's scar running around in gragas in a sweet anime style looking pretty sick for that one ken in top lane incredibly strong there's always a chance you flex it to the bot lane i think it's probably better top side and Lee Sin grabbed pretty early on for Surti just to counteract the Gragas. And as you mentioned, the Gragas can be a, can be a flex, and so grabbing a Lee Sin early on to make sure uh, another high pretty jungler is off the table is, is useful. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is that we've seen Skara play a lot of the utility-based junglers as well. He's played against some games of Nunu. We've seen him on Ivern most, more recently as well. So it could wind up being a fact that they flex it into the top lane, but they're also going with another pick that could cement Gragas in the jungle, but could wind up going into the mid lane as well as the Jace is picked up here, something we haven't seen a ton of recently. Yeah, absolutely the case. And Jace, honestly, I think is another uh, champion that has a video for Dyrus on it, yeah. actually. <laughs> in the exact same video as Gara's Gragas is, is the anime of Dyrus's uh, Jace. So awesome for that one. The Tlia, by the way, uh, I think is less likely to be a mid laner and more to be a support for Shifter. FYI, those who haven't watched Delta Fox games yet, uh, Shifter played it before. So I'm excited to see what support Tlia can do or be a flex pick to mid for boy. It's very surprising. You put a mid laner into the support role, and he gravitates he towards mid lane mages. Weird. Yeah. Plays Zyra a bunch too. Who would have thought for that one? So I know, lots of shocks coming through. Thresh, honestly, I think is 
probably the best support in pro play right now. I think mm. the champion is incredibly strong. He's one of the highest, if not the highest pick rate champion. I think next patch we go to 712, he gets even better with Zeke's Convergence being a stronger item. Mm -hmm. uh, Redemption being a worse rush item, meaning that like, not that you wanted to buy Redemption that much on Thresh anyway, but he gets right. to go buy tank items and buy other cool things. And like the Karma who's rushing Redemption is now a weaker champion. So in the future, it gets even better for Thresh, I feel. And honestly, I think life is good for, uh, for a Thresh player. Bion is going to feel pretty comfortable on this. Yeah, close to, if not 100% pick ban rate in the EU LCS. Definitely rose up in week number two of the NA LCS as well. We've seen a lot of priority on that. That and the fact that he's just a playmaking champion. So you, when you wind up having carry top laners or split push top laners like the Kennen that potentially go in the top lane, yep. you throw out a Thresh hook, that's your engage. That's what you're missing oh, from that. Top lane. Yeah, absolutely the case here. And, and honestly, even with Kennen in general, you're you're kind of not looking for hard engage. Like Thresh can bring it, of course, right? And if you get a pick, you get a pick. You're never going to say no to a free kill. Mm -hmm. One thing I do like about Thresh is that he is flexible. You can go for the hard engage, but because this Kennen's going to be splitting top lane, you're almost always playing defensively in the four man. Mm -hmm. You know, getting enough wards that you're safe to do all this kind of stuff, and Lee Sin's good at that. But you're winning through the Kennen. You're actually going to be winning through Chris, and it's going to be a lot on Chris to create the major advantages. And again, if I'm saying, let's see Big God Jackals play a good game of League of Legends, I want to see Chris get the advantages. I want him to, to do well in his lane against Thyrus. It's a closer matchup, but it's one he can win. Mm -hmm. And the team give him the wards that he can split push to victory. You got the quintessential carry top laner and challenger in Chris. You might as well play through that advantage. But in the second pick phase here, we have seen a couple of the 80 carries banned away from I'm a Cutie Pie, whereas right. the mid lane pool was pinched on the side for Delta Fox. They're trying to cut down on what Peck and Wolf has, pl Peck and Wolf has played a little bit of. It used to be very, very popular with those Poke-based champions. Last split, we saw him pick up the Orianna and the LeBlanc specifically in that split push kind of style. Yep. This time around, he's going with something a little similar. He's got the Ari on his side. And, and I do like Ari here. I think Ari works well on a four on four, right? She can be dynamic and she can join the Kennen pretty easily. If you need the one through one, she's okay in that. It's not like full cast in her phase where it's like <laughs> the primary role that can, pin, can pinch in if you need it, but also the fact that you've got wave clear. And I want to see some wave clear out of the bot lane major role as well. Maybe a Caitlyn or a Lucian or something like this. Well, Caitlyn's banned, so that's not going to happen. But that's the kind of champion you want to see because again, you should should be able to win through Chris, and the, and the other four-man group needs to be able to keep enough map pressure and, and you know, need to not be dove as well. And Lee Sin can control that, Ari can control that. Lucian actually grabbed up here, which is, you know, partially takeaway, partially is a good champion for Cutie Pie. And yeah, the entire roster is locked in, and we see that Lee is definitely going to come down to the bot lane. That's going to be a Cassie Pia mid. And I think these are some good lanes. Double Box can win these lanes. They can get early leads, which I think needs to be step one of the plan if you're going to win a game. Right, and then you wind up having that Jace uh, flexed over to the top lane too, and mm -hmm. kind of split push Jace top lane style was one of the things that we saw very, very prevalent in, you know, Worlds last year. That sure. was a very high, highly prioritized pickup, but it is going to wind up being the Ken flexed into the oh, carry position, okay. and it's going to be Shen in the top lane to split up against the, the Well, Jace. I got bamboozled. That's all my fault. I was so <laughs> sure Ken was going to be top lane for Chris. He swapped off the style, and Shen, Supposed to be a pretty good matchup into Jace. We're still on 7.11, so Doran's shield is OP. You get two mm -hmm. potions with it. He's not going to get pushed in early on at all, and it's very easy to buy a lot of armor on, on the Shen and be durable a lot. Now, there's still two mages in the enemy roster. He can die in team fights, but it's going to be all about can now Dyrus be the one with a split push lead. Mm -hmm. And I actually wonder how much Delta Fox was planning around this cannon split push and, and the 1 4 that they're going to go for, and then are now a little bit blindsided by it. Yeah, it's definitely a different style as to what we've seen from uh, Chris specifically. He he was the one playing the Jace. He was the one playing the carry top laners like Rumble. Last time we saw him around on Big God's Jackals, this time he's going to be playing a tank and playing a little bit more of a support kind of role. Whereas Delta Fox, I mean, they got Voiba in a later game scaling carry in the Cassiopeia. They have an early game aggressive bottom lane with the Talia being a mage in the bot lane to pack sure. a huge punch with Lucian. We'll see how it happens as game number one unfolds. It is kind of funny. There's an anti-synergy with the recent... Uh, patch changes to Spell Thief's Edge with Talia because there's a one second lockout between triggering your uh, tribute stacks a second time. Mm -hmm. So you, you put down Threaded Volley and it shoots all five shots out and you only get one stack out of it. It feels bad, man. Oh, unfortunate. It's direct or indirect nurse to the support Talia. Uh, Cassiopeia the same. Yeah. Zyra as well, the plants, you know, unless they're different plants, like a Q plant and an E plant, they count the same spell as well. It's oh, I did not know that, actually. Yep, yeah, Q plants, I tested it in practice the first day it came out. I was like, how does it work with Zyra? Because Zyra's like my most played support. Uh, the Q spell and a Q plant are individual, but if you like summon two plants with a Q, you only get two stacks. You need to, like, like a second kind of plant or a different spell to land to get your third stack immediately. Oh, that's a little unfortunate, although I guess that's kind of why the item was designed that way to begin with. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was a little strong, so it's a little bit uh, balanced out now. You don't get instant stacks all the time. Either way, of course, we are into this one. I want to see what kind of lane assignments they go for and then what the level one looks like. Lee Sin has a lot of available available paths. You can solo any camp in the game. Mm -hmm. um, Raptors aren't the easiest, and Shen is not a great leash. Ari can give a Q, but it's not the, you know, you don't really love starting Raptors on Lee Sin, but it looks like he 
is going to be top side, and we'll see what he goes for. We could potentially path down towards the bottom side of the map then. The AD carry cannon pick here for Fabi. I mean, right. we talked about when he was in NALCS, he was kind of that go-to utility AD carry player, played basically Ash, Jin, and if those were taken away from him, he kind of struggled a little bit to find a third pick that he was really reliant on. The virus kind of came up into popularity around the time he was phasing out of the LCS. But the cannon pickup provides a lot of utility right. in that sense as well. You have an okay form of engage by one up popping uh, your ultimate and getting the stun down, but more right. importantly, you have the CC that provided for you. And this honestly changes the texture of the team comp a whole lot. It's, you know, one of the nice things about the Aries that she fit into the old version where I was obsessed with Kennen being the top laner there, and I think she fits in this one as well, where you've got a ton of good engage tools. You mentioned it in champ select. Thresh, you get that hook, you can make big things happen, but right, Kennen's a good engage tool. You can deliver a Shen to the front line. The Lee Sin can, you know, ride into that party as well, and Ari's very good at following up on the fight. So this is a very good, like, aggressive, power diving available team. I'm actually very excited to see how sort of fast and aggressive Big God's Jackals can play with this composition because it's very dynamic, it's very aggressive. The wave clear is really bad. It is only Ari. If you mm -hmm. get behind, you can't defend turrets very well. And honestly, it's, that can be a downside. And and we'll see again if Delta Fox, their their main way to win is win through lanes and then you know try to push the lead from there. There's not a lot of great defensive fallback options. And so this comes down a little bit to Sir T doing well on the early game jungles Lee Sin to make sure that early game goes okay. Well, that was the one big roster swap that Big God Jackals made with bringing Sir T into the jungle. And they wound up trading Wiggly away, actually, to Tempo Storm. Right. We have yet to see on the actual live broadcast, but are still alive and kicking in second place in the Challenger split. But I'm interested to see how he slots in with Big God's Jackal's playstyle and how Big God's Jackal's playstyle has evolved. Because as we mentioned just in the pregame segment, Chris used to be on those very heavy carry top laners. They used to play around Fabi on the bottom side when RF Legendary was their top laner, and he would come in with these Rumble teleports to really help get Fabi ahead. And now that he is kind of one of the forms of engage in this one, I want to see where Sir T pass early on, and if they try to gank heavily down on that bottom lane between the Talia and the Lucian, who want to get those early lanes. Nice little word by Scarra. Of course, that means both jungles know where each other are, and Sir T not going to go for the Q follow. Either way, Scarra is going to be pretty safe. Very close on that one. Either way. Yeah, it, vision gained, and looks like they got pretty much identical camps done on both sides. The advantage to Scar being that he, of course, took the, the Scuttle Crab down. Otherwise, it's, yeah, been pretty equal on both sides. So far, early farm lead is in the favor of Delta Fox. Most of that's going to be the fact that Shen is a champion. But also props to Voiba, who is heavily outlining Peek and Wolf right now in this Caspi Ari matchup. He's up almost double, so that's actually a pretty big deal. And that's with the fact that Peek and Wolf was actually getting a push lead. So significant farm lead to Voiba. Big props to him, honestly, because back when he was in the LCS, he had... It felt like he was one of the weaker mid laners, and and coming in, I, I like just seeing the roster announcement. I felt like Boy might have been one of the weak links in the squad, but he's actually doing very well so far in this game. Yeah, we saw him playing up and aggressive at level one, not being afraid to spam away on the twin fangs to harass down on Pick and Wolf and. Peek and Wolf is actually a matchup that if you are Delta Fox, you may want to try to attack in this one. He was kind of a linchpin for Big God Jackals last year. He wouldn't necessarily go crazy in every single game, but he was an extremely consistent Challenger Series mid laner. And if he had one even in lane, he provided his role extremely well, whether it was a split yeah. pushing threat, whether he was an assassin, or one of his favorites like the Corky or the Zerat, those poke based heavy AP damage poke mages. Sure. But his job this time in the round is going to be very burst. He's going to be kind of assassin y if they get the kind of fights they want. Nice juke by a shifter gets away from the hook. And it's always just a little difficult, you know, trying to play those things right. Because you've got to guess where the hook's going, and they've got to guess where you're going to juke, and Shifter, thankfully for him, is able to guess properly so far. Yeah, that's just the very strong lane mechanics you were talking about before from this Delta Fox squadron. I mean, that's one of the things you kind of have to... It's a little bit of a... Not necessarily an unknown factor. It's one of those things that you kind of can't count out is the fact that at any point in time one of these lanes could just completely snowball and even though the solo queue kind of mentality we've yeah. seen challenger teams play that before hasn't necessarily worked out it could be also viewed as a certain advantage with any of these any of these players and all of their uh, potential not potential but previous lcs experience yeah sure and delta fox i want to keep seeing how the laning phase goes right now no dives really available you've got to get them really low before that's even a possibility so it's going to be a holding pattern for a little while Scar starting to get out farmed though, just coming into the mid lane to shove out for Voy, but this is actually important. Voy has run out of mana, so he has aggressed a fair bit. He's gotten a farm lead, but now that he's Oom, he actually can't shove the wave anymore. Ooh, this is cute though. The knockup's gonna miss. Yeah, they are gonna want to miss in the knockup of the flash turn from Bayano. Shift is gonna flash after, and Cutie Pie dashes in as well. The ignite is down, but Fabi's able what to get stun. the stun up down on the shifter. And first blood goes over to the thresh from the ignite. And now Fabi chasing down an Ama Cutie Pie. Just one more mark to stun him, but he will back away. That was actually really big. The fact that the knockup missed from Shifter is a very huge deal. And the fact that Bayano did not have to flash away from it, was able to flash the piercing light instead. Really, really massive. Well done by them to knock down uh, that, that Talia so quickly. And suddenly the entire landing phase lead just completely disappeared. 
We can watch that replay again. And again, just the fact that he was able to juke just up to the side, flash the piercing light, and now too many cooldowns burned. There's just no way they get the kill anymore. That hook was massive as well. And I mean, just so fortunate. So many incredibly tight timings as well. The double set out of Cannon, obviously massive in its own right. And I, I mean, I can't even blame Delta Fox for going for the all in because mm -hmm. you play that one 10 times, they probably get it seven out of 10. And right. unfortunately, this was the outplay by Big God's Jackals. Props to them. Yep, and holding on to the heal for the absolute last minute there from Fabi as well, just to keep Ion all alive long enough, knowing that he could survive by flashing away there. So, early getting advantage on the bottom side here for Big God's Big God Jackals. And like we said before, that's going through one of the lanes that they're extremely familiar with playing around, giving the first blood over to, technically it was Bayano, but getting the assist yeah. over to Fabi, wants him to go back, picks up his build water cutlass extremely early on. No surprise here to see the very, very standard opening builds, Blade of the Rune King and a Hurricane, all that fun stuff. Cutie Pie able to stay in lane long enough to get his own sort of equalizing items. He did have a farm lead, so the 200 gold assist doesn't, you know, change that much as far as what they can both purchase, but it's going to be, looks like the standard Ruin King, Ruin King into Queen Lucian build as well. And at a certain point, though, I feel like it's going to get very hard for the Lucian to get a lot done here. We're still in 7.11. Uh, the Cannon, obviously, very, very good laner at a certain point, and uh, just providing so many stuns it makes it very easy, right? If he gets into a fight and Chris ults in, Cutie Pie is almost always dead if his flash is down. Interestingly enough, uh, we've seen a lot of 80 carry Kennen. We saw Sneaky play it in the NALCS last week, but mm -hmm. it's really kind of been the one of the only champions that Reckless has played in the EU LCS. Yeah, he just keeps getting it, and people are happy to let him keep hitting the champion. Yeah. Uh, ooh, we've got some shenanigans in the bot lane real quick. Looks like they're going to just back away and be safe. And this is good. This is a good shot calling up by Delta Fox to realize, guys, this is dangerous. You know, you're going to get dove on by this. By this. All right, get away from here. But look at the ward coverage by Big God's Jackals. They've got about seven different wards in this bottom side of the map. Three control wards in the jungle. They've got Scuttle Crab. They've got four basic wards and another control ward down in this bot river in this bot jungle. They are really playing on that side of the map, and that's really strong. It's an Infernal Drake. It's the best Drake you can get, really, as far as winnings are concerned, and they want to keep pressing a lane. They're already winning in. Ten and six. Ten and six. Here they go. You know, Delta Fox, they may have stuck around a little bit too long here. The slicing Maelstrom comes out, and they're able to lock down and kick around on the shifter as he winds up falling down. Cutie Pie is able to actually answer a kill onto Fabi, so he will wind up going down. The Shen stand you know, was used as well, but Delta Fox going to take top lane first tower. And that is so incredibly smart by Delta Fox, and props to Mark Z for this one and the rest of the squad for realizing bot lane was going to get absolutely smashed with level 6 Ken and Shen. And I can't even blame Cutie Pie and Shifter for dying here. Okay, yeah, maybe they could have backed out, but like, Okay, Lee sends on your side of the river, you're instantly dead. It's a hard pill to swallow. But the shot call to send three top lane, push that turret down. Very smart by them. And first turret gold. Okay, it's still less money than the double kill was worth. And again, yeah, at a certain point, Cutie Pine Shifter probably should have left and sussed out something. But it's a hard play to beat. And Ooh. now look at that body slam flash to knock back. Yet. Stun misses from Cassio, though. Oh, so the paralyzing gaze unfortunately misses. And Talia's not able to get the slowdown, so Pekin Wolf will survive. But. I mean, you were able to trade a kill on the bottom side as well, so Cutie Pie being able to pick up the kill on Fab, you definitely want yeah. to make that play. Kind of worth it for Delta Fox all in all. Yeah, it's a, it's a 450 gold swing uh, to get a kill with an assist on top of it. We can watch this sort of bot lane play again. And yeah, they're going to do the best they can, just putting the damage onto the one. I, I kind of dislike that uh, they didn't put Shen on the one who actually taken aggro at the first place with the cannon taking damage the entire time. I realize you want to deliver the Shen in a melee range, and I get that. But if Fabi's going to pull aggro first, he should have gotten the channel. And if he's not getting the channel, he shouldn't pull aggro first. Yeah, that's true. Maybe just a little bit of tower aggro mismanagement from Big God's Jackals. The answer across the map from Delta Fox was the first tower, but we're tied at one tower apiece, and there's still about a thousand gold lead on the side of Big Gods. Mm -hmm. so they still have some advantages for themselves. One death on Ken is not going to set them all too far behind. Now the big question for us is, we saw Delta Fox try to transition back into mid lane, try to get a gank on Peek and Wolf. They weren't able to execute that one. Now the big kind of question mark is, what happens next? You said the Infernal Drake is still alive. Right, and I think this still favors Big God's Jackals. It's part of the reason I think they're staying bot lane, because there's still a minute and a half on Chris's ultimate on the Shen, so you're not immediately re-diving the bot lane. But you do want to pressure bot lane so Sir T can do this, right? Viana walks over. They've already got wards. They can actually see Scar right now. They've already warded his drugs out. And so you make sure you grab this. You don't give away an Infernal Drake. I'd rather have an Infernal Drake than a general outer turret. So this is absolutely the right play by them. Smart choice. Again, and they've reacted so quickly to having a winning bot lane. Right, they get the first blood, they've got lane pressure, immediate dive, immediate turret kill, immediate pressure for Drake. These are all very good choices out of Big God's Jackals, and they're getting farther and farther and farther ahead at a very quick pace, which is all very heartening. Yeah, and it's very disheartening if you're a Delta Fox fan, because you mentioned before, the way that Delta Fox is going to wind up coming out ahead in this one was through trying to punish the lane phase. 
You saw Dyrus on the top side of the map has a steady CS advantage over Chris on the bot on his side, but Chris has been able to pick up a kill on the bottom side. He's picked up an assist to kind of negate that lead. Dyrus did invest in the coal early on, so he has a decent advantage, but are you going to be able to play around utilizing this Jace being your strongest member on the map right now? I like kind of all the choices that were made right here. So yeah, you're gonna win the matchup if you're Jace for Shen. Like that mm -hmm. that's that's why you pick Jace's early game leads, and unfortunately for Delta Fox. They haven't really found a lot of use out of that one. They did get the turret trade, and to be fair, that's actually pretty much props to them. And and the coal start as well to further capitalize on the free lane, as, as it were. I think that's actually really useful as well. But the fact that Chris managed you with his first ulti, yes, you lost your turret. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's probably going to happen no matter what. To get two kills, to get a turret out of it, like it's just kind of positives on all sides, and I'm just sort of being cheery and friendly because I think the players are all making pretty good options so far. Yeah, well, now we're going to see what happens with Delta Fox. This kind of the bottom lane phase has kind of ended now, so Big God's Jackals are rotating their duo lane up to the top side. Looks like that Delta Fox is going to be doing the exact same thing by responding by sending their bottom lane up to the top side. And while Delta Fox may struggle outside of lane phase, they are A-OK -okay with being able to match teams. A lot of these games between Delta Fox also, they're not necessarily hard stomps, or if they lose lane phase, they automatically lose the game. A lot of these are very, very close matches where it just comes to the objective call from the opposite team, although this oh. time around, Delta Fox, they find a hole in the vision of big gods and collapse on the surface. Yeah, and that's a big risk right there because they already cleared a ward on the river, so they knew that they were spotted. The two of them were spotted kind of by themselves, the rest of the teammates are landing, and, and it's, it's a bunch of fog of war because their own wards had dropped off the map. It's just a little bit too risky to start checking into a Dragus' jungle when everyone else is missing. So a bit of an overstep there. Search he didn't have to go for something that aggressive, especially walking into the jungle to clear a control ward. Like mm -hmm. that's that's butting up a bit more than you're supposed to be able to chew right there. So the gold back to equal here, and as you mentioned, it comes down to the objective calling into the mid-game situations. And we're in a close game here, and we can see who can make the better plays out of this. Well, Big God Jackals, one thing they've had for solidly the first 10 minutes of this game is vision control. A lot of it was on the bottom side of the map when Fabi and Bayana were down there. We'll see if they were able to transition the same kind of vision advantages to the top side. And I think it's unlikely, actually, at this point. And I, I want to point out two things. So the Delta Fox, the second one just timed out, but the ward in front of the red buff in the bottom of the map, as well as the one in Trivarch, those are the ones that Dyrus really needs to make sure he's safe and not getting ganked by Elise Sin. If he has those, he's almost always safe to push in and continue to use this lane advantage. He's got his Ruin King done already. He's going to absolutely brutalize Chris in the matchup, who went for... I guess he needs to go TM out, right? Like, you, you have to get Wafer at some point, but it doesn't mean he's at a power trap right now where he's going to continue to get bullied and continue to lose turret damage. And as long as Dyrus has wards, he's good to go. But the fact that the, the gold is kind of equaled out, it's just always going to be difficult for Big Gods to get really good wards to get that second round of tower dives off on Pie and Shifter. And you can see they get one war, but back they go. No deep points yet for them. You see Cutie Pie using the cone to get kind of wave clear, but Fabi's going to come and get the slow from the build order. Cutlass slicing. Maelstrom locks up Cutie Pie, but Shifter's there. Seismic Shove not going to deliver Viano forward. And as you mentioned, Big God Shackles struggling to try to get this tower dive off on the dual lane from Delta Fox. I do want to see defensive control wards out of Delta Fox. Big Gods, their credit, are pretty much consistently keeping four to five control wards up, and that is really big for them. This is good by Scar. Again, the, the bullied bot lane. They knew there was an attempt at the dive. The fact that Fabi ulted it all meant they were trying to dive this, which means the entire team is top lane. They can go for this play here. Explosive cast is going to force Chris backwards, and he has to flash away from that shock blast gate combination from Dyrus. It looks like they're going to continue soon. chasing down, though. Cask is out. The, the oh, he is there. Blocks yeah, the damage. The Dyrus. That, Good job. Yeah, Dyrus is able to pick up the kill. Voivo is rotating around just for the kill secure. This might be another tower being taken by Delta Fox, but Big God Jackals immediately respond with the rift tower. Yeah, definitely smart by, by all the teams to, to always have a counter action. Honestly, I'm hard by what Delta Fox is doing. Uh, I still think that Big Gods, for the most part, are doing the best that they kind of can. Uh, there's a trail pickup. Uh, Chris probably should have backed up. I think, you know, he just completely lost all of board coverage entirely, but, you know, really good building by Dyrus, called the team over. And again, the fact that Fabi ulted it all means they know they were trying to go for a real tower dive, that the rest of the team was up there, and it was very easy for Delta Fox to say, Scara, this is safe. No one's on this side of the map. This is a free dive to go for, and it worked out nicely. Well, meanwhile, Kicking Wolf has kind of been a staunch sentinel in the mid lane, just whittling down that tower, and it looks like that between Big God Jackal's top and mid lane, they might wind up getting two for the response here. Three members strong on the top side get that, and Kicking Wolf is able to finally peck down that mid lane tower. Yeah, well played by them, and they keep the Rift Throw buff as well. They actually managed to take the outers down without using it, so next time they get a power play in the next three minutes, they should take a tier two without much issue. And Peek and Wolf, three, uh, 30 CS up. Yeah, he lost out on the kill that Voiba got earlier on in the game, but up an Infernal Drake, up a turret. Rift Herald's going to probably be a second turret. Mm -hmm. uh, is all really good things for Big God's Jackals. And 
this should be a pretty solid game for them through the mid game unless uh, Delta Box can make a big play to kind of come back. Yeah, the Rift Herald is definitely going to be a kind of a make or break factor, I think, in this one. But Big God Jackals having that advantage, they basically have not a guaranteed way, but a very solid way to break that inner ring of towers, which as we saw before, they were struggling to dive through the first tier once. Right. It's even more difficult to execute that game plan when you're that much closer to Delta Box. Yeah, expected value is like 80% of a turret at the stage of the game. If it was outers up, I think it's like 95% a turret goes down. This one is probably four to five times to get something out of it. And again, this team has the goal lead. They've been largely playing pretty smart around the map, so uh, we'll see what they can actually do with this one. It is on the Lee Sin. I think it's a. It's interesting putting it on Lee Sin, by the way, because it means he has one less source of wards to right. ward hop with. He's got exactly one ward left. I've played with Lee Sin's, so we're like, oh crap, I meant to ward hop and I stunned myself by channeling. But this is nice by Delta Fox just uh, capitalizing and coming back down to this side. Now we know that Chris can TP in or ult in, dive through the same. And we'll see if that play comes through. Thinking, well, gonna get body slam done. Gets flat body slam. The Shen 10 United, not even enough. As QDPI picks up a quick kill for that and a hole in the vision from Big God's Jackals finds Delta Fox setting up around the Inferno Drake. Really nicely played by them. The setup was there. Ooh, the Pirate follow. Wow. Getting aggressive on Chris. Gonna take to the sky. Just continue to pound away onto Shen. Trying to make sure he doesn't have that global available and just fighting the global across the map, though. Chris doesn't have either one of them available, so Dyrus gonna keep on this one, whereas Delta Fox across the map has taken away the Infernal Drake. Dyrus, though, Shock Blast gate combinations. Gate's not up yet. Shock Blast yeah. is. Has to back away. So he flashed for kind of nothing. I mean, I appreciate the thought. Dyrus finally gets to 1v1 his opponent. They don't get the, you know, the, the party in from the other team at him. He didn't get camped so much this game, but that's still a bit aggressive for my bit. face. So uh, I'm not sure I like the flash for nothing play out there from Dyrus, but still props to, to Delta Fox for getting the setup around that Drake. Really nicely done by them. Bursting through the penalty, really obviously important as well. But uh, I mean, that's also kind of fault to Big God's Jackal for not resetting in time, using their gold lead and actually getting their own advantage out of this. Yeah, they were the ones that took the two towers in response, but Delta Fox yeah. utilized the vision they had, protecting Dyrus from that play that they made on the bottom side of the map and transitioned it into an objective of their own. So it's actually very good things for Delta Fox here is the fact that we said that a lot of their objective control was kind of incidental. They would maybe win a fight or be on the opposite side of the map from their opponents and get something because nobody was there. This time around, a very proactive play to set up right. the dragon. I really do like that the fact that Delta Fox, I mean, they come in, you know, really expecting like full solo queue, you know, a lot of bad choices. And, and honestly, it's been pretty reasonable for a Challenger Series standard. So uh, good job, Mark, whipping them up into shape. And Big God's Jackals, again, we're, are supposed to be a fourth place team here against one that hasn't bought a win so far at all in this split. And this is maybe a closer game than they would like. But as you mentioned before, it, it's mm -hmm. the mid to late game shot calling that really tends to separate these teams out. And uh, we will see if, in, you know, the 20, 25 minute mark, it starts getting better for them. And it looks like the Rift Herald is going to be utilized by Cersei on the bottom side of the map. Big God's Jackals have pushed out a decent amount of minions on this bottom side, so I'm going to take you up on that 80% that this tower goes down. We'll see if Delta Fox is able to respond. They only have two members down here, so it looks like, no, nope, four now coming down. The tower is not that long for this world, though. Rift Herald about half HP will easily take this one down, and Delta Fox got to be careful. They don't get caught by that threshold. Smack, and there it goes. Nicely played by them. They, again, talking about just sort of generically good plays. One of the things they like about casting Challenger is if the team is paying attention, you have a lot of plays that are like not insane, but just like always smart. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, the entire team went bot lane to make sure they could use the Rift Herald really well. They got the entire team down on the side of the map. Like it's just things that are always good. You get the fancier plays outside of the really top tier teams, but it's it, you can learn a lot about shot calling even watching a, a mid tier Challenger Series team by saying, hey, this is a good play. This is a cross map play. This is set up for Drake. This is ward control. Mm -hmm. And they have this, which is good. And that's one of the things that we always see coming into Challenger Series. You have a team like Delta Fox, who has a lot of very talented individual players, who has a lot of skill and solo queue on their side. I mean, most of these guys are in Challenger, if not the top tiers of Challenger on the line. Like of Shifter and um, Cutie Pie, sure, they've swapped Cutie Pie's best AD carry in North America. I mean, obviously, yeah, obviously right? the Number best. one forever. Ooh, got Scar got actually utilizing explosive cast to make sure he gets Ooh, that, that one. that play. Button. The hook is going to keep on the satchel pan. Beautiful kickback as well. Yeah, and Fabi popping the slicing maelstrom just to make sure they get the, the stun down on the Scar. So he takes the red buff, but pays with his life, and they still donated over the fat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly where they wanted it after all. So Scar, unfortunately, didn't get enough teammates there to make that one safe. But That's that's actually a good illustration, though, of this is what I'm going to do in solo queue. I'm going to invade. Yeah. But now you have the better coordinated challenger team who usually come out a little bit ahead of just raw skill as you transition into the challenger series. Yep. They say, hey, Gragas is taking this away. They collapse on him, and he pays for it. And I'll credit to Bayano for playing that mechanically pretty much perfectly. The flay either prevents Scar from autoing at all, or it pulls him right back off a of satchel plant. There's really no way Scar survives. Uh, without getting a better ultimate to knock them back a bit farther. And then the hook, like, right afterwards is pretty much still. No chance Scar gets out, so kind of locked him into CC and guaranteed there was no escape. Yeah, so Delta Fox now. They're down in towers. There's four on the side of Big God's Jackals. Rift Herald is no longer a thing on the map, and now we're cresting into that 20-minute mark. This is the point in the game where Delta Fox 
historically has started to falter a little bit, and Big God's Jackals, when you know when Chris first joined them in the last split, they still stalled out games until about the 35, 40 minute mark, but their later game shot calling definitely improved. Now they have Sir T, competed at Worlds, took down CLG when he was on Pain Gaming. Sure. So he should know a thing or two about rotations and being able to close out a game in the later stages. Yep, officially better than after at League of Legends, so... Uh, I don't know about that. That's, no, that's exactly how it works. You win one game, you're better than every player on that roster. Ah, okay. Is that why uh, the BRTT versus Double Lift argument was a thing? Yeah, of course. All right. Well, we see a blue buff invade coming out from Delta Fox. They're going to be able to steal that one away. It looks like they might have given it over to Boy Boy. So that might Ooh, be important. Big really good seismic shove coming out there from Shifter. But the charm and the CC chain landed on Scar. Boy Boy now has to try to flash away. He's got a fresh blue buff, but it might wind up being donated away. Shen Stan United with Shen on the peak. Charm. Taking a lot of damage in the front line. And I'm a cutie pie, maybe a little too far in there. Winds up getting blown up. Wow, two for zero off the blue buff invade. I was about to criticize Big God's Jackals for not actually having control of their, their jungle in time, but they certainly capitalized well. A lot of that predicated off of Skara just simply being too aggressive, but it means that Big Gods get wave control. They can start pressing for more tier twos, and uh, if they put the next few minutes right, this game is almost going to be out of reach. They're actually going to try for a very... I don't know if they can actually take Baron with how low the health levels are, but they're going to try, certainly. I'm just going to hope that uh, Sir T can life steal a little bit off Scuttle and try for it now. Yeah, well, nobody from uh, Delta Fox seems to be the wise, but there's no vision control. Shifter is coming up on this one, but as you mentioned, low health bars. Chris already dropped an extremely low. Shifter shows up. One threaded volley forces on the back away. It looks like a teleport being channeled by Dyrus as well. It is not going to wind up following through with that one. So Delta Fox... Scary proposition from big gods, but they force right. him away. And so this is the, the the price you pay for taking a risk like that, Baron. If Double Fox don't check at all, if they realize that you're, you know, they, they just think you took a slow recall, then, hey, you get a Baron sneak. Congratulations for you. But if this play backfires like it did, Dyrus gets the free turret. You're now slow on the play. Like, this this could have been absolute map control for Big God's Jackals. Mm -hmm. They set up for a free Baron. They keep bot lane 2 2 alive because they actually recall the Shen in time. And that play could have looked a whole lot better. Now, fight in the mid lane. Boy, boy, gonna get charmed up, gonna get kicked away. Once he's using the Paralyzed Engage to try to keep himself alive, but Pekin Wolf dashing and flashing forward. Drops extremely low, but able to pick up the kill on the Boy Boy. Shifter flashes forward. Cutie Pie off the side. It's a one for one. One for one, pretty big damage out of the, the mid lane right there. Interesting to watch for. The end of the, the grand scheme of everything, it means almost nothing except for the fact that uh, Delta Fox still are in control of somewhat mid and bot lane because of, again, the, the sort of flubbed Baron call right there. This is actually a snowball off of that, that even though the prior fight was won by Big God's Jackals, they didn't actually play for map control. They played for trying to cash in on Baron. As a result, Delta Fox on the back swing still have lane control. They can still fight with Mountain Drake. And the question is now a smite fight between Scar and Serti. You got to be careful, though. Dyrus is kind of on the opposite side of this fight. And a good taunt forward there by Chris will land on the shifter. He drops extremely low. The support to Leah barely gets out alive. But now they turn focus on to Scar. Explosive cast going to split up the fight a little bit. Dyrus on the backside trying to take down Bayana, who was knocked into him. But Scar on the front line has fallen down. Shifter, shifter with no HP <laughs> in the middle of Nowhere will wind up going down to another shuriken from Fabian. Big God's Jackals, they take the fight. To be fair, he was cut off, oh. so it's not that much you can complain about. And Dyrus, ooh, not long for the world. Uh, oh, he's Fabi, cut off, he's dead. Not in range 100% he's dead. Yeah, Chris right. picks up the kill. Even taunts him for the kill. Nice. Unlucky there for him. He finally gets revenge from the laning phase. And Chris, to his credit, losing lane matchup still down a far, but 2 1 and 5 is scoreline. He's done a very good job of getting into the fights and making sure they count. Now they're going to go over to Big God's Jackals, and it looks like they just, Delta Fox were not able to rush that down in time. Even if they had control for a little bit of that, didn't mean enough. Well played to these guys on the red side. Yeah, and as you can see, on, as the replay unfolds here, Delta Fox split up a little bit. Dyrus is poking off on the side, but he goes to go yeah. wrap around, whereas the rest of Delta Fox run down, and the Big God just collapses on the opportunity. All right, it's essentially a 4v3 right here, and even right now, Dyrus is actually fighting the Mountain Drake because it's hitting him, and the Explosive Cask also is a really big miss. And, just, it was a good taunt out of Chris. He got, I think, a three or four man hit off of the uh, the Titanic Hydra active, so he really chunked people out. And Chris then, you know, he put the flank in to make sure that the Talia couldn't go anywhere. He's on the backside of Tribrush. And yeah, I mean, Dyrus was like, he couldn't get anything done. It was pretty much a four man group from Big God's Jackals. Dyrus was not where he needed to be, wasn't able to help damage the front line or knock back into the engage tools. And he basically jumped into a 1v3 and did nothing with it. And so. Big God's Jackals able to kind of take control after they had that bit of a risky Baron call, lost some pressure on the map, lost the bottom lane tower because of it, but they've gotten themselves a dragon, they won themselves a fight, and they solidified themselves about a two and a half thousand gold advantage now, so about 25 minutes into the game. And Delta Fox, they kind of had to reevaluate where they want to be on the map at this point in time because these kind of split up crazy fights, these 
going for objectives when the whole team may not be on the same page. It's the same kind of thing that we faulted them for so far in all the Challenger Series games. Right. It, it's the kind of mistake that doesn't get punished in solo queue, where it's like, oh, if I'm five seconds late to Drake, we lose a team fight. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen in solo queue, generally speaking, right? And, and again, I'm going to say this mistake is kind of on Dyrus, where he wasn't with the Mount Drake when it needed to happen. Big Guts Jackals did come down in time, did fight for the objective. They have, have put wards down properly. I mean, how many times in solo queue do you see green smite out of the junglers, right? You, you don't actually, you see the red and blue smites more often than not, generally speaking, right? And so the better the ward pills. control. I, I, well, of course, right? And hey, if you're if you're running around playing solo queue, that's fine. But uh, what, yeah, when you're playing, you know, a more competitive game where it is more about objective calls, right? The vision's certainly very important. And and yeah, I mean, Dyrus, how many scrims did they really played together, right? And, and he was late to the play, and, and that's what it comes down to. These little, these mistakes where it's a really small thing, but it does matter. Well, as you see now that Dyrus level up on Chris, but Chris, now that he's gotten two kills, one death, and five assists, able to collapse and turn this fight around on Dyrus. Beacon will kind of join the fray here, and Dyrus going to get charmed, nice going to get stunned up, going to get taken down. Props to Beacon for showing up into that fight. The, the rest of the team actually still has lane pressure in mid, so it was completely free. You can see all three lanes are pushed toward Delta Fox. When that happens, you see what happens right there. Peek and Wolf is allowed to get out of the lane. No one can call for him. There's no wards that beneath more. They've swept out everything, you know, across the map entirely. And it's very, very free that even though Dyrus has this level lead, has the Black Cleaver, has the Giant Slayer to help kill tanks even better. Like, he's itemizing as much as you possibly can to beat up a Shen. And he's got a level lead. And it doesn't matter because he survives long enough. The teammate roams down. And, and again, this is... We're past 25 minutes, and the better choice is being made by uh, the team of better teamwork. Not only this, but now Dyrus is trying to 1v1 against Chris, who, like you said, losing lane matchup, wound up picking up kills on the bottom side early on with a level 6 Dan United kind of play, able to capitalize on the advantages his team was able to make. He's in the challenger scene now. This is Chris's domain. It is Chris's domain. He's, he's very at home right here. And Dyrus at home being 1v2 in his own lane, but, you know, <laughs> goes to show it still keeps <laughs> happening here. This one, 1v2 for him. Did have the early laning lead, which again, you start for the matchup, but yeah, now the map's being played much better on this side. And well, it's again, it's, it's the, the term we use sometimes in the LCS is how good is the speed run going to be, right? You expect Big Gods Jackals to win this match. It's like, okay, how clean can you be at this point? Because at this point, I feel like they've got a, a real sort of visceral lead that they can hold on to and, and work the rest of the game with. They've got that turret lead, they've got the Drake lead, and so. Uh, let's see what they can do with this. Yep, we're crossing the 28-minute mark right now. So, as you mentioned, turrets down in favor of Big God Shackles, but only about one. They've been able to take down that bottom lane outer tower, thanks and due in part to the Rift Herald, but they still have those two outer towers they need to kind of crack. And while they will wind up having a very tanky Shen to help them dive through those towers if they so need to, you still have to worry about the fact that, boy, boy, we haven't talked a lot about him. We said that early on in the game, saying that might be one of the weaker links for the side of Delta Fox. Maybe not necessarily the strongest player on the roster. Picking up this Cassiopeia, he's still a ticking time bomb. He's got a stack rod of ages, he's got a Saris Embrace. Yeah. If he positions properly in these fights, Cassiopeia could run away with this late game. Totally agree. And I think in a real, like, five on five, straight up battle lines team fight, I do like the Delta Fox competition. Here comes the fight oh, in the Yeah, we might see one as boy, boy immediately being targeted. Down, has about the Saracen Brace, but Fabi gets a great slicing maelstrom on most of the team from Delta Fox. He goes unstoppable, and Dyrus teleports into the middle of the fray, but his team has already had to run away. Shifter's trying to help oh, as much taunt. as possible, but a double taunt from Chris. Fabi picks up another kill. Chris picks one up for himself, and Big God's Jackals are going to take a bite out of Delta Fox. All right, Cutie Pie versus Fork. Take your bets, Twitch chat. Is Cutie Pie going to win this one? He's running for dear life. Here comes Sir T. He's been hit. Oh no, Cutie Pie lost. Uh, clearly he lagged right there. Yeah, yeah, unlucky. That's going to be four to four. Big God's Jackals taking a four for nothing. And now this Baron, a lot safer than the last one. Actually, they might be going for five here. Scar being zoned away by Big Bad Chris on this Shen. And Big yeah. God's Jackal is going to capitalize off that fight, capitalize on this Baron, and take firm control of this game. Absolute control. Four for zero team fight. There's the Baron recall. And that time it was a good Baron call. There's only one on the map. Yes, the jungler, but Chris made the right choice of chasing Skara off. That's very good. Solid practice play right there. Oftentimes, like, why would you chase kills? It's the jungler. You've got to chase that one down. Smart by Chris. And as we watch the replay, I'm pretty sure it was fault to Scar, who explosive cast in the front line. Just watch when Scar goes for the ulti here. It's a pretty good setup. Yeah, the hook misses. Okay. You know, they're not sure when they can go for this one yet or not. It's a really good chunk onto, onto the cast P as well. But as it starts, there's the body slam, and then here comes the cask, and it knocks in the cannon, it knocks in all the frontliners. It actually helps Big God's Jackal do everything they want to do. Good cutting away. The Ari stays alive the entire time, forcing the flash of Lucian. And at this point, there's just too much damage has been dealt. The Cassio's gone, and, and Boy Boy is supposed to be a primary damage tool on this team, and he got picked off at the start, so there was no damage to be had. Don't need a gap closer if the enemy Gragas is being a brother. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Brother Skara. 
for the help to Big God's Jackals. So now Big God's Jackals, Baron buffed up, going to be taking another objective off the map just to make this one clean as a second Mountain Drake. And that's going to definitely help them with the Baron buff in tow. They've already pushed sure. down that top lane tower off the back. That's taken up the kill on Skara as well. So these remaining towers and the base for Delta Fox are going to be under heavy pressure for the next two or so minutes. Now you kind of have to wonder, do they have enough wave clear to stave off these super minions? The Delta Fox wave clear is not bad, to be honest, but Baron buff makes it so easy to keep the melees alive. I expect at least some Hither to die during the duration of this Baron buff. And that was actually before I realized that Botlin was already practically dead. So yeah. now I'm thinking it might be two inhibitors at this point. Uh, again, the wave clear, it's, it is hard to kill off the melee minions, and he can just ward off away from this. So that ult meant nothing from Shifter. It's kind of a waste to cut off a Lee Sin. That was odd to me slightly here. But uh, yeah, they still got a minute 45 to go on this one. Big God's Jackal can run it right back up the mid lane. Uh, you know, props to Dyrus doing the best he can to try to prevent some of this. He's still battling Chris. But Chris now has a level lead. He's got an item lead uh, almost certainly at this point here. And it just no longer matters from Dyrus anymore. Mid lane should be an easy push as long as Chris keeps top under control. Okay, so Delta Fox is going to be hard pressed in this one to try to defend. Super Minions on the bottom side will be streaming in in just a little bit. And as you mentioned, Big God's Jack will just have to group it up in the mid lane. Push it down on that side. They have a split push Shen, or essentially a split push Kennen, if they so choose to send Fabi up to the top side. So they can just continuously push these waves out. They've had pretty decent minion management this entire game. A lot of these plays they made around objectives, or a lot of the movements they made on the map have been because they've had all those pushing lanes. But Delta Fox. Might be going for a little bit of a sneak. Oh, the charm, though. Oh, going to land in the middle of the culling as well. I'm a cutie pie is going to get hit up. He's actually going to bait in Surti. Surti has to kick away the Talia. Dyrus now going to be the focus. Very low on Mana. Has to try to run away. But the back line comes Fabi. It's an assassin-based AD cannon coming in from the backside. He's going to pick up two kills for himself. Another one went over to Surti. And Big God's Jackals have scattered Delta Fox. You got to give Delta Fox credit for trying. They're losing this game by about 10,000 gold. They went for the Fanatic brush in front of the red buff, hoping that the team would rotate through that way. But the problem is no one's going to rotate through the front of the red buff when red's down and so is Baron. Unfortunately, they kind of chose the wrong brush. Then they chased in Lucian first into the front line and yeah, charms it up as much as you need. So Big God's Jackal's going to look to close it down in a 40, sorry, 33 minute game. Well played in the game one, 18 to five and kills beautiful stuff. Big God's Jackal's taking a game one victory over Delta Fox and not very surprising, although the majority of the game was a lot closer than we thought it was going to be. Delta Fox has some pretty good movements to kind of counteract the objectives. They had yeah. really good kind of trades in the objectives when they knew they were a bit of a step behind what Big God's Jackals was trying to do. Right. But the vision control for Big God's Jackals was a little bit better, and they were able to just get to things first. And as you mentioned, five seconds late from Delta Fox was already too late to make it happen. Yeah, as you mentioned, kind of everything you mentioned in those last couple of, se uh, couple of sentences, I agree with. There were several good choices made out of Delta Fox, better than I was expecting coming in as a team where they... Realize bot lane's losing. Let's go for the top lane play instead. Let's go try to trade objectives back and forth and do smart things like that. So there definitely were some some good moments out of Delta Fox, but clearly Big God Jackals, the stronger team overall, and, and especially once it got into the 23 and onward minute mark mm -hmm. where they were at objectives in time with their whole team. Uh, again, you mentioned being five seconds late. Dyrus not being in that, that first Mountain Drake fight was huge because that's what cracked open most of the gold lead, and it just went farther and farther and farther from there where there's suddenly no longer any things to be had. Ward control dropped off. You were seeing Peek and Wolf be able to join that Dyrus Chris matchup where Dyrus is building a full squishy, right? It's Blade of the Ruin King, Black Cleaver, Lord Down with Regards. It's items that help you kill Shen but not survive an Ari. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they had all three lanes pushing, now Peek and Wolf can go to any side lane he wants to and start pushing people down and, and start getting assassinations. And it just kept happening left and right. Yeah, well, Big Gods, they did have a decent gold lead for pretty much the entirety of the game, but we have a replay all set up of where things really started to go south for Delta Fox, which is around 24 minutes. That's an objective fight we mentioned. When Dyrus was there just a little bit too late, he was on the opposite side of the fight. He yeah. could not help his team out. Unlucky for Scar, he tried to body slam to prevent the taunt, but the taunt still hit too, and it meant a ton of burst damage on a shifter. Explosive Cask also just really wasn't able to land on it much, unfortunately. And here's the Dyrus flank, right? He gets Thresh low, he gets a little bit of damage on a cannon, has a flash away from Lee Sin. He jumps into a straight 1v3. Mm -hmm. And I think if you were part of that fight from the back line with the, the minor feeling that Scara did do, I think that fight looks a bit better. But this is what happens when you choose to limp into a fight you're already losing, right? That That's... It's shame on Dyrus for being late, and then shame on Dyrus for even joining the fight when they've already lost it as well. At a certain point, you let your teammates die. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of whose mistake it was, you've got to kind of let that happen at some point. So, uh, yeah, the, the miscommunication, the miscoordination was definitely there, and this is emblematic of the squad. Is is They don't scrim a lot together. They are not as sharp or polished as the other teams. Even if they can look close in the landing phase, you had the very, very tight fight 2-on-2 two two at, like, level 3 in the bot lane. Like, these mm -hmm. are all things that, you know, are it's close, right? These, these guys are... As an individual sort of general League of Legends player, they're about as good, right? These are these are strong players, but um, 
Solo queue is a different game from competitive, and, and Big God's Jackals mm -hmm. in their element here. Yeah, they were definitely in their element, although Big God's Jackals did not play without their own faults. They were not 100% sure. perfect. There was a Baron call they made just after that, where they kind yeah. of went for that, and they seeded pressure on the bottom side when Dyrus was basically back up. So there were still a couple of those missteps, but by the time it wound up getting into the later game stages where the map movements were basically more important than the skirmishes, and setting up for objectives wasn't necessarily the gameplay. It was basically being the first to set those things up. Once again, the, the kind of strategy that Big God's Jackals had laid out wound up getting them the next big fight that they were able to transition into a Baron they were able to secure. Right, yeah, our other replay is, is the Forfazir that gives them the Baron at this mm -hmm. point. And, and yeah, the, the team is playing very much better right here. Again, Brother Scar is kind of a point of this one. And <laughs> the gold wasn't too far apart at this point. As far as items are concerned, this could have been doable. But I got to shout out Peek and Wolf for the giant chunky puts on the Cassio. Pia sets up the kill, which happens almost immediately as Fabi comes in, the taunt lands as well. And then Peek and Wolf is then able to duel I'm a cutie pie after the Sir T kick. So he actually essentially sets up the kill on the Cassipia and sets up I'm a cutie pie to have to force out the fight. I mean, there's a lot of individual plays that were better across the board. A bad explosive cast, a great charm. Oh, yeah, he missed the charm, but a great setup on the Cassio all the same. A great kickback to, to make Lucian have to isolate against a, 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 an Ari, which is not an easy matchup for Lucian. So uh, mm -hmm. sort of props down the line for the individual plays. This fight was winnable yeah. uh, for the Delta Fox side, but it was played better by Big God's Jackals. Well, that's one of the things we mentioned about specifically Peek and Woof and a lot of the Big God's Jackals got it, squad is the fact that they're not necessarily the most standout players in the Challenger series or top tier in their role in, sure. in solo queue or just basically in mechanics. They're all role players, and when they work mm -hmm. together in those situations, they want to coming out ahead. Sure, and there's the reason, of course, that they are still the fourth place team, because if you if you replace all those players with United mm -hmm. uh, on, on the Delta Fox side, they probably win that fight, right? right? From the gold deficit. You give, you give better mechanical players on the side, and, and this was a fight, again, won by mechanics, won by in-fight decision-making. You improve the player, suddenly you don't quite have those same tools right there. And, and that's, again, good for them. They outplay Delta Fox, mm -hmm. but it is a weak team to outplay, and, and they, are, they look, you know, about like a fourth-place team. All right, well, we are headed into a break, but when we come back, we're going to...